carpet is a native town of a nation to which it belongs, and it is a scripture that encodes and preserves history, geography and the lifestyle of the people in its character ornaments. Carpeting is an art allowing us to communicate with God above us and maintain a link between generations past and future. For 5,000 years, Azerbaijani carpets have been trusted domestic helpers and travel companions of humans. For Azerbaijanis, a carpet is a ground cell, a door seal, house decoration and furniture, a comfort item, a horse or camel cloth, a travel tent, a prayer rock, a mascot, a good luck charm and a wrapping for the final journey. A traditional Azerbaijani house was adorned with striped palace rocks serving as tent coverings and dividers, and elaborately made kilim likened to a bed of pearls. Yes, carpets are richly symbolic and communicate our ancestors' message through the time. This message is expressed in various compositional structures and patterns of the carpets. Wisdom of the carpet surpasses the mundane knowledge of the world because it is indeed otherworldly. Carpets encapsulate beliefs, myth, cosmogony, faith, the entire spiritual moral riches of the people who created them, all represented by colors, patterns and needs. There is a saying from olden times, dirt will not get to someone who lies on a carpet. A poisonous snake can't move across a carpet, its piles would irritate snake's skin and make it leave. A newborn child learns to crawl on a rock. Of course, it's very important from the point of locomotion, but it's not limited to that. Look, a baby crawls and sees, say, a color. This is a beginning of aesthetic appreciation. It sees a shape and starts to recognize shapes. This is mental development. All of this is etched on child's brain. Carpets are not just past, they are inherited from generation to generation. This living craft, whose beginnings are traced by archaeologists to the Bronze Age, still continues to be made in the way and by the rules developed in those primitive times. Sheep are usually shared in the spring and in the fall. Wool for carpet making is yielded by sheep that are taken a special care of. We don't let them graze in bush and shrub, we baste them often and let their fleas grow long and clean. After shearing, wool is washed, spun and then dyed. And we scotched it, span it and wove carpets from it. At this age I still comb wool, spin it on the wheel and make carpets as dowry for my daughters. We used to make carpet back to be put on horseback. We made dyes ourselves in traditional ways from oak root, onion peel, walnuts and violet flowers. Weaving was up to us too. We wove all kinds of them, palas with a three-leg design, gaba with tassels, you name it. This is green color. Our mothers and grandmothers used to make green dyes from various grasses and leaves, all natural. This is yellow color. No matter if you use manivello or any other technology or gadget, there is no way you can weave a real carpet with a machine. It can only be done properly with a human hand. But these simulations are manufactured by the thousand and then sold throughout the world under the name of carpets. Needs in those so-called carpets are not like the real ones. Machine-made needs are easily destroyed and most importantly, they can't digest and divest energy as the real needs do because of their need structure. A symmetric need is so intricately bound with a beam thread that it goes between the two threads in a symmetric fashion and its tip is aimed outside to the outer space. That's what lacking in simulations. <laughs> Sarge, 
number of color hues usually used in Azerbaijani carpets is between 30 and 35, but this carpet that I have woven required using 200 hues and more than 700 oriental ornaments. An impression of the light radiated from the middle of the carpet is achieved through a combination of those 200 colors. The gems of medieval Azerbaijani carpet making now grace the most famous museums of the world. Ornaments and composition of Azerbaijani carpets have become a rich source of inspiration for European Renaissance artists. Up to this day, Azerbaijani carpets have maintained their status as prized domestic decorative items. I have come from the mountains to the plains. I have continued making my carpet here. This art can die. My mother says it right, carpets are our past and our future. Ornaments worn by our women are not simple floral motifs. They represent our home, our blessed motherland. We learned those patterns and stitches from our mothers and grandmothers and we will teach the next generation so that this art is not lost but continues. Carpet making is like painting or writing. You write so that what you feel is not lost, so that you can transcend to your descendants the throb of your heart. Uba carpets are characterized by geometric designs. Passing through generations, this feeling solidified, acquired the quality of stonework, stone carving. This is a chichi style carpet. We have dyed it using onions, walnuts, oak bark, natural colors from other plants. I have woven these carpets as well. Kuba Pirabadil, Herat Pirabadil. This one is a Gulistan carpet. In making this one, I've tried to expand the meaning from a sheltering for a home place to covering the whole native land. The most rare specimens of Azerbaijani carpets are now restored at Azer Halcha and Azer Ilme companies' facilities. And in addition to restoring, through so research and learning this craft, a new generation is taught to love and admire the carpets to assure that this living art has a future and for the sake of keeping our culture. Each Azerbaijani carpet is like a page from a fairy tale. Carpets are divided into holes. These holes originate from the same root, same mentality, same spirit. The Azerbaijani state has tried to protect this cultural heritage. The first carpet museum in the world was established in Baku in 1967. The museum has done invaluable work in collecting unique carpet specimens and in carpet research. As early as in 1983, UNESCO proposed to hold an international symposium on Azerbaijani carpets at the Azerbaijani Carpet Museum. This has become a tradition so that the latest fourth international symposium was held at the UNESCO headquarters in Paris in 2007. On 13 July 2009, a round table of researchers, art critics, professional carpet makers, artisans from various regions of Azerbaijan adopted an address to UNESCO calling for inclusion of Azerbaijani carpets into the UNESCO's representative list of world intangible heritage. <laughs> Azerbaijani carpets can be found in each region, district and community in Azerbaijan. They are being restored and studied. New carpets are made based on old ones. Despite being named differently, the common owner of all these carpets is the Azerbaijani people. The best illustration of this is a law on protection and development of carpet making in Azerbaijan, enacted by the parliament in 2004. By signing in 2007 a special executive order, the president of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Ilham Aliyev, initiated the construction of new premises for the National Museum of Azerbaijani Carpet and Craft Making. However much the world ages and globalizes, Azerbaijani carpets remain forever young and beautiful. Something that fills our bosoms with pride, we take a pilgrimage to Azerbaijani carpets. <laughs>